All right, let's have a look at a slightly more complicated example. In this case, uh, it is a character from the um, animation fundamentals, uh, a Blender, a Blender project. Uh, I'll put a link in the uh, the description. And uh, it's uh, pretty uh, uh, standard, uh, like not much, not much going on except for maybe IK legs, which we'll address uh, with the FK arms. Uh, it also has a uh, a frame. Uh, like a pose on the start frame. So frame one, which is the, the the start frame, has a pose, and then frame two is where he goes into T pose, and then from there he remains in T pose. So um, we can keep it, but uh, for this particular example, I'm just gonna keep him in T pose. Uh, so I'll select everything and um, let's see what's it called. Delete keyframes. Is that what it's called? Let's have a look. It's called clear keyframes. So I select everything and I'm gonna clear the uh, keyframes on everything. There we go, so now he re just remains, uh, <laughs> okay, he remains in A pose. That's all right, we're gonna, we're, we'll, we'll work with this. So in the outliner you have your standard uh, mesh and geometries and things. There's no ragdoll in here yet. So to start, let's, uh, let, let's start assigning. So I'm gonna select the root and work my way up the hierarchy. I'm gonna skip this uh, middle part because I want to use this midsection as a as a as a collision shape for my character, and then uh, up here, and then the neck, and finally head, and then we can go right all uh, assign and connect, and that creates the uh, the base hierarchy. From here, we'll work our way out the torso into the clavicle, upper arm, lower arm, and the hand. Uh, I noticed this character also has uh, an extra hand over here, so if he was in T pose. Uh, would have to to make sure we select the the FK and not the IK hand, but uh, now he's in A pose, so we don't have to worry about that. Right, all assign and connect, and because we selected the torso first, uh, these new markers will be attached to the torso, which is what we want. Uh, continuing out the other arm, select, 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 uh, and we can actually sort of we can select the fingers as well. I want to include those, so I'm going to hit uh, repeat last. To repeat that last, I'm going to add the fingers because I only added the hand here, uh, like that. Uh, so now we get, uh, so the hand is a bit shorter on this side than on this side because um, it didn't know we wanted to include the hand, so it didn't know how long to make this. But here, because we selected the fingers, uh, it knows that it, w it, w it wants to put a shape from the first selection to the next selection. So we can address that later as well. The, the legs are the special part. We can't assign to these bits right here because they're not actually being used. Uh, we want to assign so that when the IK is moving around, we want our markers to move around too. And for that, we need to find what is it that rotates when we uh, move the IK controller. So I'm just going to go full screen and go wireframe so we can see inside. And uh, I found that on this particular rig, there's a couple of bone collections. So if I unhide some of these, you'll see that one of them uh, layer 32 has these extra bones and when I move the IK these are the bones that rotate uh, when I move the IK so we want to assign markers to these guys so that they follow uh, and then we're gonna have a look at retargeting these because we don't want to put any keyframes on these guys we want to keep put, uh, put keyframes on our uh, pole vector and the uh, IK the end effector all right so I'm gonna reset the position on you and then we can start with the hip and work our way down. I also found that uh, when I select the first time, uh, it starts selecting a, a funny, uh, funny control that I don't want. Let's see which one is that. Uh, no, the f so this one that's correct. So it's it, like the def and the def. I'm not you know the definition I suppose. There's another one here. If you keep clicking, it gets to another IK shin controller, and I don't want that. So I found that if I select the torso the first one and then I can select from the outliner the second one. Uh, these seem to be moving along with the IK handle the best. And then for the foot, uh, I don't actually want this one because this is like a reverse, so the pivot is way over here. I, I think it's meant to uh, to deal with the, well, I think this is the one, so you can do like a reverse, like a toe stepping. So I don't want to go from the lower leg onto this guy because then we'll have the pivot up here and then the next pivot is going to be like way over here, which is not right. Uh, so instead, let's do this one more time. I'm going to select the upper arm 
or sorry, the upper leg, lower leg, and then I'm going to select the IK foot controller. And I also want the toe, so we have the entire leg, and now when I go right all assign, we'll get the hierarchy that we expect. So the same thing for the other side, select you, and then from the outliner, select the next child, IK control, and toes, and repeat. Repeat assign markers, there we go. So that, was, that looks good. Now we have our, our character. We can we can return to our bone collections and hide these extra joints. Uh, we can also try and hide the IK arms. We don't need those. That's over here. We also don't need the uh, FK legs. So let's see if I can find those. They are over here. So now all we have is the uh, IK legs and FK arms. All right, so far so good. Uh, next, I would start tuning some of these shapes. So let's go back into object mode. Uh, object mode right here. And enter into the manipulator. From here, I'm going to start collapsing things because the outliner is getting a bit messy. There we go. So now we can start selecting our markers and uh, modifying them to fit our character. Something like so. And here, this is quite large. Something like so. For the uh, clavicles, because they are symmetrical, I'm going to activate the enable symmetry. So now when I select one side, it will select both sides, which is convenient. Something like that. I want to make sure that they don't uh, self-overlap, you know, overlap with each other. Uh, we're going to disable contacts in this area because there's a lot going on. So in this case, it doesn't really matter. But in general, it's good to keep things uh, to keep grandchildren from intersecting with their grandparents and the neck looks like this and the head uh, yeah the head had a pivot way out here it's not super important either because we're going to uh, replace the head with the uh, the actual geometry on the head mesh the arms uh, we're going to replace these two so it's not super important uh, this one will fix and now I want symmetry on both yeah that's good uh, and again, I'm going to replace the meshes on these guys. And uh, we also haven't added the uh, the thumbs, so let's uh, let's do that now. If we go back into post mode, selecting the the hand and work my way out the thumb, right all assign, and the same thing for the other side as well. Uh, repeat that. Now I'm going to enter the manipulator this time and select. Uh, well, let's start with the hand. Uh, the hand is kind of an ill-positioned capsule right now. So I'm going to go selecting the marker, right all utilities, and replace mesh. So now I can pick any mesh to uh, replace this capsule with. I'm going to pick the one that's the hand. So now the hand becomes the new collision mesh. I'm going to repeat this for the lower hand and the fingers, uh, and just work my way across basically the entire character. Uh, this character is nicely formatted in that it has uh, individual meshes for each body part. Uh, except the torso, which is a bit of a bummer. The, the torso is actually glued together as, as one mesh. So I'm going to save that for a bit later. So we got the legs and the other leg and so on and so forth. And there we go. So now we have uh, replaced all of the meshes, uh, nearly all of the meshes. We have a few uh, areas left. If I play now, we can start seeing, uh, you know, there's some motion in the guy. It's looking... Not too shabby. Uh, if we uh, unlock the pelvis, uh, selecting it and going to the physics and setting it to be simulated. All right, we can use the group in this case. Uh, the group being set to simulated. So now we should expect the character to uh, yeah, to fall over because he doesn't uh, <laughs> he doesn't have any uh, no life yet. For the um, uh, well, it's not really an issue yet. So let's wait until this section right here is an issue. There's a lot of overlap happening in this area. Uh, we can we can fix some of it by um, with symmetry. We can just reduce this a little bit. But uh, we still have an issue with the uh, upper arm intersecting with the torso and the uh, neck intersecting with the clavicles because these are not direct children of each other. But for now, because we don't have the uh, self-collide option on, uh, it's fine. But as soon as we enable it, you'll find that he... <laughs> It starts doing like a football pose. What was that called? <laughs> so we'll address that uh, in just a moment. 
Uh, first, I think we'll reduce the uh, stiffness on the guy so we get some nice... Uh, so he you know, actually falls to the ground because now we start seeing that he's uh, way too agile, way too flexible. And uh, I think the first area to start with is the thing that collapses first. The, uh, the clavicles are not looking too happy. So let's start with that. If we go back into the full screen mode and go to limits, we'll start adding some limits. The default limits are, are not suitable for the clavicles in this case because they rotate a lot. We kind of don't want to rotate down at all, uh, but we do want to allow him to rotate up. Because if you if you notice your own clavicles, they'll they'll sort of rest in the lowest position possible, and you can still raise them. And uh, they can do a little bit of forward and backwards, but mostly forwards. They're sort of also rested in their most back sort of the, the most most backwards position. Twisting, I'm not gonna bother with. Uh, we only really need these two axes. For the arm, on the other hand, uh, this can uh, rotate up until uh, it comes into alignment with the clavicle, so about here, but no further. So in order to get your arm above your uh, shoulder height, uh, if you notice, uh, you know, you'll actually rotate your clavicle instead of the upper arm. Even though to you it feels like one smooth motion, you're actually coordinating these two without really thinking about it. Uh, next, uh, this one doesn't really rotate that much inwards, and then same for the uh, the backwards. We can't really do go back much, but we can go forward quite a bit. And uh, twisting, um, it's kind of a funny bone to twist, but uh, there is twist here, so I'm gonna give it a little bit in this case, about 30 degrees. For the lower arm, this one is the simplest of all. We know that it can only rotate in one axis. So we'll only allow it to go and become uh, you know, a straight arm up until somewhere around here. The, the hands, and you'll notice that uh, we have symmetry enabled at the moment, but it doesn't seem to pick up the, the other hand as being symmetrical. Uh, this can have to do with um, this A pose that he's standing in. It's probably not exactly symmetrical. So we can increase the, the search radius and hope that it finds the other side as I click. Can I, can I hope that it finds the other side? No. It doesn't want to... Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's it's at least two um, centimeters uh, wrong. Uh, you know, or off, off, symmetry, off the symmetry axis. So I think that should be fine for most cases. It doesn't seem to affect anything else. We can leave the search radius this high. Uh, so again, I'm going to just re-enable these so we get symmetry on both sides. And for the hand, uh, you know, it's quite flexible. Uh, not so much on the upside, but a bit more on the lower, and that uh, you know back and forth you can do a little bit. Uh, twisting normally the twist would not be in the wrist, but it would be in the, uh, the, the the arm area. We don't have a middle bone right now, so I'm gonna leave tw leave the twist in the hand, uh, and it's quite flexible actually. It can go about 180 degrees. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it quite quite a bit quite a bit of twist. For the fingers, I'm going to keep it simple. Uh, these technically are able to twist a little bit in these axes, but I am not going to allow it just to keep it uh, simpler. So not too much up, but a bit in. And I'm going to lock these and do the same thing for the lower fingers as well. The, the thumb is also quite flexible. Uh, I would argue that not that much. And probably it can twist, but very little. In fact, let's, let's not have any twist and see what that looks like. For the thumb, like the, the tip tip of the thumb, let's have it not go further than straight, unless it's a shoemaker's thumb. Mm, yeah, mm, yeah. So it can become straight, but not further. Uh, it can go inwards quite a bit. Twisting is not going to be allowed, and this one is also not going to be allowed, so we only have one axis for the thumb. Uh, moving on to, let's start with the head. The head is funny because it rotates as one, but really it's two two bones, like two two limbs. So we need to basically half the amount on both of these axes to account for the complete motion of the head. So we want a little bit of twist here and a little bit of twist here, and together they'll become a lot of twist. And uh, the head normally doesn't bend backwards that much, but it can bend forward quite a bit like this. It can twist a lot as well, but remember the twist will be this 
plus the neck twist, so we can only give it a little less. So that should be uh, decent. Uh, torso, this can rotate uh, quite a bit, but not backwards very much. Forward quite a bit, so not this, not too much backwards. Side to side, yes, but again, like the neck, it has sort of two axes, uh, two of these body parts to rotate, so they're, they'll add together to become one pretty large motion. Twisting, not so much, not so much. Legs, uh, I mean, we can actually we can actually have a look and see what that looks like at the moment. So we know we can see that the the arms are are decent. You know, they're, they're not they're not doing anything overly funny. We we solved the immediate issue of the clavicles collapsing, although they're they're moving forward a lot. That doesn't really look that great. Uh, let's see, if this is getting a bit messy as well. So I'm gonna I'm going to take the solver node and I'm just gonna move that out so we can see the character side by side. Uh, so the first thing he does is to sort of flex his clavicles forward and I don't really like that. Let's see if we can address that. So he does have some motion in this axis and a lot of motion in that axis. I think it's because I think it's because the clavicles have... okay so you see how they're they're inside of this cone shape, but they start at one of the uh, the sides of this cone. So as soon as you hit gravity, this um, axis is going to want to slide down to the center. And that's what's causing this uh, forward motion. It sort of wants to go into the, the center position of the limit. And it's not going to be a problem in practice because we're going to give him a bit more strength. So I would argue that it's fine, but we could we could ah uh, i'm going to leave it uh, i mean it's not it's not wrong it's just um looks a bit awkward that he does that but once we increase the stiffness on the clavicles that that that's going to go away all right so other than that the i would say the the arms look good but obviously the legs <laughs> and we're also st starting to see some issues with the having uh, self intersections so we're going to address that as well but let's start with the legs. So if we go back into the manipulator, the uh, the legs they can rotate in every axis. So let's free that. They can't go a lot outwards. So I'm going to limit that, and not much in this axis either. And they can't go backwards almost at all, but they can go forward quite a bit. Like if you sit down with sort of your legs straight. Um, they can twist uh, a little bit like this. Yeah, that's, that's probably fine. And the knees are like the elbows. They can only rotate in one axis. In this case, it's going to be backwards. That looks decent. For the feet, they're also quite flexible. Uh, in this case, the, uh, the axis is facing the wrong way because if you remember, we assigned to this IK control rather than the, the bone itself. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, because uh, this is just a starting position. So as the foot rotates, say, clockwise, this line will also rotate clockwise. So you just have to sort of imagine that uh, when the foot points down, this line is going to rotate forward because it's going to go down with the foot. So you want to limit uh, a little bit at least. Uh, I mean, the foot is flexible and also the twist, like the the lower arm, it, uh, it technically rotates the uh, the lower leg and not the uh, this sort of part down here but because we don't have a middle a midsection here we don't have any uh, twist on the lower leg just like for the lower arm we're just gonna let twist happen in the foot and uh, not so much in this axis that's the, rarely looks good so something like this uh, maybe we'll allow it to rotate forward a bit more than down but uh, this should suffice. And uh, actually the toes as well as want these to rotate in only one axis. And not by much. And probably more upwards than downwards. Uh, well, we'll see We'll see how it goes. So now here we go. So now we can already see that we, we, we have limited the motion on the, the knees, but I would, I would argue that it's a bit too much. Uh, because we can certainly bend lower than this 
Uh, so let's increase that limit to like something like this. Uh, I would say that looks, that looks a bit better. Okay, we're starting to get some pretty natural looking motion if we just uh, play this now. Yeah, that looks pretty good actually. I think he ends up in a pretty natural pose. Uh, fingers curled on one side, but not the other. Uh, the thumbs have disappeared into the hand because we don't have any uh, limits. And also the thumb on the other side, I forgot to replace the meshes, so let's do that. Uh, in this case, the mesh is going to be way over here, so I'm going to select one without symmetry. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in shape mode, but it just makes it a bit easier to select. You, uh, I'm going to do the, uh, the tab menu this time, and you are you. All right, there we go. So now we have our character uh, looking quite natural. Uh, we're getting a slightly different fall this time because the masses are different. And uh, next, let's address the uh, self-collision issues happening on the torso. So you see how the, you know, it's, there's a lot happening up here. If we again enable self-collisions, we can start seeing that he, uh, he will uh, <laughs> he'll start acting real funny. Uh, and, and the reason being that we're asking uh, the solver to keep the arm out of other shapes. Right? So that this intersection here, uh, we're asking the solver to, to fix that. But we're also asking a solver to keep these limbs connected because we know that they are connected anatomically. So what's the solver supposed to do? It's going to keep them together and it's going to try and keep the collisions away. And that's why you end up with this sort of like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> it's like, uh, so the solution, I mean, there are a few solutions. The, the main one is to start disabling contacts on some of these. So I'm going to disable contacts on the clavicles because we don't really need contacts on the clavicles at all. Like, it's rare for the clavicles to come into contact with anything, so I'm just going to disable it altogether. So, okay, and alongside that we'll also want to uh, disable... we could disable contacts on the torso as well, but the thing is the torso is much more likely to come into contact with with the, with the things. Uh, I think in this case it will even come into contact with the, with the ground. So if we want the contacts to be accurate to the model, we kind of need contacts to remain true on the uh, torso as well. Uh, so the alternative to disabling contacts, if I can hover in on my... There we go. Uh, the alternative to disabling contacts then is to give these all a, uh, a collision group or a overlap group, uh, meaning that the, together in everything in the same group is able to overlap with each other. In this case, I want you, 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 and you, and you, and you. If you overlap, that's all right. Uh, but if you overlap with anything else, that's not okay. So now when the torso hits the ground, uh, it will contact with the ground, but together they will just ignore each other. And I'll set the overlap group to any of these. Uh, it's just a number. You can also set it in the properties panel. So now they all have this custom group C. Uh, we can even, we can include the, the clavicles here, here too, actually. Now they all have this collision group C, <clears throat> which means that they will not collide with each other, but they will collide with everything else. And with that, I think that looks pretty good. So now we have self-collisions and we have proper limits and we collide with the, the ground and everything looks pretty good. Uh, from here, the only remaining thing is that we can't actually record uh, as it stands right now. Because if we have a look in the solver, and we have a look in the target targets section, we will find that some of these targets are not keyable, and uh, primarily our definition of the thigh. So if I pin this for a second, uh, if we look at these guys, they are being recorded onto our onto the the definition thigh, and that's no good. That will not work. So instead, we want to target the, we want the knees to be recorded onto these um, pole vectors. And we want the feet to be targeted onto the, uh, well actually the foot, we did, we did assign the foot to the IK control. So these are actually already good. You can see here at the IK foot. That's accurate, that's correct. Uh, the upper, upper, upper legs, we don't want these to be recorded anywhere uh, because they don't, uh, they're completely driven by the IK, which is coming from the pole vector and the IK vector. So uh, for these guys, I'm going to select, well, we can select both of them. We can go ragdoll, uh, utilities, no, actually edit, and we can do untarget. 
So now these will no longer have a target. You can see it here, they're empty. And these guys, um, if we start with the one, and I'm gonna go right all edit and retarget. So now we're in a picker mode. Now we can select this uh, pole vector. We can see down here, it says that this is the marker. It's the marker for the left shin. We wanna target that onto the knee pole vector. So I'm gonna hit enter or return. And there we go, now you've retargeted it. You can do the same thing for you. So if we go here, return, there we go. So now we can see also in the uh, retargeting the target section that uh, the lower leg will now go to the knee pole. The other leg will go to the other knee pole. And with that, uh, all of these other guys are keyable. The fingers, the feet, the toes, the pole vectors, the thumbs, uh, everything looks good. So I expect that if we hit record now, we should be able to get this simulation onto our original character. So if I just lower the, uh, the frame range to something more sensible, maybe something around 100, looks suitable. And uh, let's give it a go. So if I record now, uh, we can update the viewport. We can, let's keep the cache so we can compare uh, the before and after. There we go, it's now running the simulation. And it's now applying that simulation onto the character. And we can already tell it's looking good. And there you have it. So now if we uh, hide everything, we can compare these two. And uh, oh, they look pretty accurate to me. We can, uh, we can confirm the accuracy by moving the solver back to the original position. So we should expect these two to be very, very similar. The, the only uh, exception to when they might not be similar, like 100% similar, is if some limbs have uh, have limits. For example, if the if the lower arm was unable to rotate, let's see if it... Okay, it is, right? Yeah, so the uh, if we uh, unpick this again, duka, duka, duka. Um, this arm is only allowed to, to rotate in the z-axis. So if the simulation wanted it to rotate in any other axis, it wouldn't be allowed to do it. And... Uh, We've locked the axis in the simulation, so we, we've sort of we've we've told Ragdoll that it it's not allowed to rotate in any other axis, but uh, limits are soft, and simulation is, um, as you know, it's 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 not a hundred percent accurate. Like it's it's an approximation, you know, because we we want to run in real time. Uh, so it's possible that you might get tiny values, or you, and, some, and sometimes you might get very large values. Let's say the arm is stuck in a wall, or let's say it's being bent uh, very hard, like there's a very strong force applied to it, so it will bend even though you locked it. Now obviously the locked, you know, a failed lock limit is no good, but it, it does happen. So if that's the case, then the uh, simulation might differ from your character. But in this case, it looks like we're good. We have the pole vectors doing what we expect them to do, and the IK feet are doing everything we expect them to do, and uh, that's a pretty successful setup of a character, so <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. Okay, before we go, let's see if we can address the torso issue, because I mentioned it's a one solid piece, so to assign it to individual markers, we need to split it up first. So here we go, this is the mesh for the torso, it's one solid piece. Um, I don't want to modify the mesh driven by the character because that would probably break the character, you know, because it has uh, these um, uh, yes, deformers. Uh, here we go. Deformers and subdivisions. So I want to modify a, a copy of this because uh, then we can use the copy to uh, replace the mesh and keep the original untouched. So let's see if we can duplicate the object. Is that possible? Now we have another torso. <clears throat> we can now remove the... Um, deformers on this one. Uh, it leaves us with this guy. Uh, we can probably keep the subdivision. We can probably apply the subdivision because we want to keep it. Uh, we want to use this, this smooth version for our markers as well. Uh, if we just hide the original torso for a second, we can confirm this is our, our copy. And we can confirm that uh, it also does not move with the character. It's, a, it's an entirely separate copy. Uh, I would like to separate these meshes by the um, vertices. So if the vertices are not connected, I want the I want them to disconnect. So can I separate by loose parts? Uh, and there we go. So now we have three separate meshes, 
And that's exactly what we need to uh, assign, uh, to replace the meshes with on the markers. So let's do that now. I'm gonna select the lower part and we're gonna do a replace mesh with the torso, middle section with the mid section and torso with the torso. So there we go. So now we have proper collision meshes, like accurate collision meshes on, uh, well, every, every body part. So from the main view, we can now see everything is is looking good. So now if we take this guy, we can uh, we can uh, you know we can move him around and <laughs> actually I see we can un uh, unhide our copy again. We can hide these. We don't need those, but we need the original. There we go. So if I go back here now into pose mode, there we go. And we take this guy and we just like uh, I don't know. Make him drop you know, like this. So we have a, one type of uh, fall, and here's a different type of fall. And we're kind of expecting that uh, no matter how we drop this guy, he's going to drop in a natural pose uh, because of uh, because of our nice limits. If we reset it, actually, I mean, we can do something like this. And we can you know raise the arm, and I don't know, like this. And <laughs> well, here we actually have a so we're we bend the feet past the limit that we've given them. So you can see here now that they start uh, outside of their limit. So this is too far. If we wanted to keep that, uh, we could. We can just expand on our limits that we've given them. So now we can see that this is where we are. Uh, maybe you want to keep that. So with symmetry, I'm just gonna expand that range. So now we are able to reach this pose, which is not entirely anatomical. This is, you know, you can probably do that. It's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit much. But uh, let's let's leave that for now. There we go. So now we had uh, now we does the superhero death. Oh, well, that's looking pretty good. <laughs> All right. Well, let's try and record that and see see what we get. I want to not keep the cash this time. Uh, and then. All right. There we go. So it took eight seconds to catch that. One hundred frames. And uh, with that, we can go back in here and we can just get rid of everything ragdoll. We can either hide it, so now we don't have any ragdoll, uh, no ragdoll visible rather. But uh, because this is all keyframes now and there's really no connection to ragdoll on the character itself, uh, if we were to delete everything ragdoll, we would uh, we'd be fine. So if I go system, delete all physics, now there is no ragdoll in the scene, but your animation is, is untouched because it's already been recorded. And there you have it. How to make a, uh, a superhero death uh, animation <laughs> with the uh, ragdoll in, uh, I don't know, half an hour or so. Hope you enjoyed.